in our contemporary age environment has been a key term the void idea and uh, environment is not only focus of uh, environmental sciences that's a discipline that i think emerged few decades ago towards the end of 20th century a discipline a subject emerged that is called environmental studies beyond that discipline major sciences like physics and chemistry they are being influenced by environmental concerns and they are looking for those alternates that can save environment and protect uh, progress should not be at the cost of environment the conflict of industrial progress and uh, environmental change or environmental disasters that is the focus of whole of knowledge in 21st century including philosophy cultural studies and literature so environmental literature or literature and environment that's a genre or you can say recently emerging genre of literature that has got a great popularity acceptance when we say environment a conventional study of environment comes to our mind that is called ecology and in contemporary world that ecology has also different shades like a political ecology or eco critical world so environment is received in creative literature i mean poetry novel short stories essays and even plays or drama it is it has affected even our language a lot and at uh, present the most significant branch of uh, linguistic is called eco linguistics in theory and criticism we see eco criticism eco criticism is the is the study of literature and the environment from an interdisciplinary point of view mean do shades hain ek environment hai aur dusra jo hai a uh, critical history of literature hai they blend together and they are seen as eco criticism in eco criticism literary and cultural scholars analyze texts that illustrate environmental concerns and examine the various ways literature treats the subject of nature in these texts the term eco criticism was coined by william lucert he is one of the leading theorist he coined this term in his essay literature and ecology an experiment in eco criticism so eco criticism has emerged as a, a legitimate branch of critical theory a legitimate branch of contemporary literature cheryl glotfelty who is a editor of the world famous eco criticism reader glotfelty 
defines ecocriticism as the study of the relationship between literature and the physical environment. It aims to restore dignity for the undervalued genres of nature writing. We can say in past, particularly in romantic literature, romantic poetry, we see a passion for depiction of nature, a keen interest in interrelationship of nature and human being, nature and human mood, nature as inspiration for the poet. And uh, that's the tradition in literature, I mean, one aspect of uh, environment that is natural environment or environment that was created by nature instead of man that's the focus of that has been focus of literature in the past but through you can say overwhelmingly political and cultural consciousness that tradition was suppressed Environmental literature is trying to revive that tradition of a human being and his contact with nature. Second, we see in 19th century literary tradition, I mean 19th century theater and fiction, a school of thought that is called naturalism. And naturalism believes that heredity and environment are two detrimental forces for human fate. So effect of environment is focus of naturalism and we can say that also provides the ground for studying human relationship with environment. Though in naturalism focuses environment affects human being and environmental literature concern is human beings are harming or affecting environment or natural environment. Eco-criticism is a study of relationship between literature and environment conducted in a spirit of commitment to environmentalist practices. Ecocriticism has certain significant, you can say, sub areas. Besides the ecocriticism, we see a tradition that is called eco feminism. As ecocriticism is study of relationship of environment and literature, eco feminist criticism or eco-feminist literature has a notion that both nature and uh, woman have been maltreated by men. And feminists are not trying to revive the natural position of women. They are also trying to restore nature and liberating nature and woman both from harmful impact of a patriarchy and a patriarchal material progress. Another is called apocalypse, apocalyptic literature or apocalypse. Apocalypse, uh, uh, though it has roots in religious uh, studies, with the notion of the end of the world. But in environmental literature, it forces the end of the world through uh, the uh, loss of natural environment. Another idea that is uh, vital in environmental literature that is called green theory. We can say that's an idea of uh, 
protecting nature besides critical theory and critical domain the genre of environmental literature has focus on poetry essays and fiction some of the representative are recently mentioned texts are being introduced here we can trace the root of man's love for nature our human urge to have a strong bond with nature through the poetry of english poet william wordsworth who is called poet of nature because we have discussed wordsworth uh, already so i will skip wordsworth today american poets they have a marvelous relationship with nature probably uh, first one was uh, r w emerson the leading poet who defines american intellectual consciousness through his idea of the american scholar and uh, transcendentalism transcendentalism is a movement transcendentalism is a, is an idea that inspires human being to think beyond the limits of physical world gary sander a 20th century poet who is uh, you can say uh, post uh, world war or post modern poet in many ways he was identified first with the beat movement of 1960s and later on he was taken as an important spokesman for the concerns of communal living and ecological activism uh, gary sander who has won the highest cultural literary prize of america pulitzer prize Sanders poetry draws on the mythic and religious experience of his own daily life he also received critical acclaim for mountain and rivers without end that is his uh, 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 great work which completed a series that sander had begun writing in 1956 so uh mountains and rivers with out and that reflects his uh, ecological activism his other works include the old ways that's a selection of essays on aspects of tribal life he who hunted birds in his father's village that's an examination of haida indian myth so his fascination with native americans myths and religious experience makes him a significant writer no nature that's a collection of his poems and reflects his concern for nature one of uh, the american transcendental this writer a fellow of uh, r w emerson is uh, american prose writer henry david uh, thoreau thoreau is writer a uh, prose writer who has written walden walden our life in the wood that is its subtitle walden is a reflection upon simple living in natural surrounding walden is part 
पर्सनल डेक्लरेशन ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस सोशल एक्सपेरिमेंट वॉइज ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल डिस्कवरी दैट्स इज सटायर ऑन अ मैनुअल फॉर सेल्फ रिलायंस वॉल्डन डिटेल्स राइटर्स एच डब्ल्यू एच डी थोरोस एक्सपीरियंसिस ओवर द कोर्स ऑफ टू ईयर्स टू मंथ्स एंड टू डेज इन अ कैबन दैट ही बिल्ट नियर वॉल्डन पोन्ड दैट इज अमेड वुडलैंड ओन बाई हिज फ्रेंड एंड मेंटोर एमरसन थोरो मेक्स प्रिसाइज साइंटिफिक ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ नेचर as well as metaphorical and poetic use of natural phenomena so what was uh, you can say a uh, focus of emerson in poetry and essays uh, that is in more uh, profound account of uh, thoreau in walden walden identifies many plants and animals by both their popular and scientific names records in detail the color and clarity of different bodies of water precisely dates and describes the freezing and thawing of the pond and recounts his experiments to measure the depth and shape of the bottomless walden pond so walden walden is a name of the pond walden is a prose work by henry david so we move to different novels which are concerned with environment some are just concerned with depiction of uh, environment that was uh, you can say uh, out of reach in the past some discussed uh, uh, deterioration of environment and some other force and make a prophecy that is called apocalyptic works very like uh, joseph conrad's the heart of darkness that makes a depiction of uh, congo river and congo country that's a mysterious exotic land kim is novel by rudyard kipling kim whose full name is kim ball ohara is a son of an irish soldier kim ball ohara senior a sergeant and later an employee of an indian railway company uh, kim's mother was a poor irish mother who was a nanny in a colonel's a colonel's household both the parents have died and this boy kim is living a life of a vagabond in british india in the Uh, later uh, uh, years of 19th century kim earns his living by begging and running small errands on the streets of lahore lahore has been greatly depicted in this uh, post colonial novel uh, sorry uh, in this colonial novel kim occasionally works for mahboob ali mahboob ali is a horse trader and he is a pathan kim is uh, uh mahboob ali is one of the native operators of british secret service in those days there was an idea of a great game detail of that idea you can read in the books of history or politics but these were actually attempts to confine the russian influence kim is so immersed in local culture that few realize he is a white child I mean kim is a is an irish parents child but he looks like indian because he has adopted indian culture to maximum kim befriends an 
एजिड तिबतन लामा दीज आर लामा हु आर एक्चुअली फॉलोअर्स ऑफ तिबतन बुद्ध बुद्धिज्म दलाई लामा इज वन ऑफ दी वर्ल्ड नाउन फिगर सो बट दैट इज नॉट दलाई लामा दैट अ करेक्टर लामा इन किम नॉवल एंड किम बी फ्रेंड्स with this lama who is on a quest to free himself from the wheel of things by finding the legendary river of the arrow river of the arrow kim becomes his chela disciple and accompanies him on his journey on the way kim incidentally learns about parts of the great game and is recruited by mahbub ali to carry a message to british intelligence officer in ambala Kim's trip with Lama along the GT road is the first great adventure in novel. So, adventure is also an aspect of environmental literature, especially in Canadian environmental literature, where wilderness is the greatest idea of environmental literature. By chance, Kim's father. regimental chaplain uh, identifies kim by his uh, um, masonic certificate which he wears around his neck neck wo ek uh, certificate dekhkar usko pehchan jata hai ki ye kaun hai kim is forcibly separated from the lama or kim uh, uh, bring uh, thinking that he is an irish man and we can say part of a british empire he should not be in the company of the natives the lama insists that kim should comply with the chaplain's plan because he believes it is kim's best interest then boy is sent to english school in lucknow lama funds kim's education kim is divide, divided between his love for his lama master and his eagerness to become a secret agent and even have a prize put on his head and his natural independence as a free spirit throughout his years at school kim remains in contact with the lama kim retains contact with the secret service connection and is trained in espionage espionage mean uh, being an agent espionage is an important aspect of war literature or anti war fiction a spinish novel a spinish stories while on vacation from school by uh, lorgan sahab uh, at his jewelry shop in shimla kim looks at a tray full of mixed objects and notes which have been added or taken away past time still called kim's game that is called the jewel game other parts of his training are disguised in the careful study of indian population and characteristic dress behavior and even how they spit in order to go undercover or to discover those in disguise after 3 years of schooling kim is given a government appointment we can say that's a job of intelligence so that he can begin to participate in the great game before this appointment uh, kim is grant, granted a much deserved break mean he wanted some free time kim rejoins the lama and at the behest of kim's superior uh, hari chandra mukherjee lama and kim make a trip to himalayas so kim can investigate what some russian intelligence agents are investigating uh, life in himalayas that is the most significant environmental aspect of this novel mean what a natural life is beyond the influence of political and uh, political and materialistic uh, exploitation second this novel actually captures uh, uh, an epidemic of uh, 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 malaria and uh, that is also part of uh, how, how environment you can say the like dirty ponds they cause uh, mosquito and mosquito cause malaria
team obtains maps, papers, other important items from the Russians who are working to undermine British control of the region. Mukherjee also befriends the Russian undercover and ensures that they do not recover the lost items. Kim helps to rescue the Lama. The Lama realizes that he has gone astray. His search for the river of the arrow, arrow should be taking place in the plains, not in the mountains. And he orders the porters to take them back. Here Kim and Lama are nursed back To health after their journey, Kim delivers the Russian documents to uh, Mukherjee and a concerned Mahbub Ali comes to check on Kim. Lama finds his river and is convinced he has achieved enlightenment. Uh, Lama's, um, you can say, learning through a river learning through nature that is very like wordsworth wordsworthian concept that nature is a mentor nature is a teacher nature is a prophet nature teaches us so uh, kim has uh, environmental concerns through depiction of uh, malarial epidemic web uh, episode, Lama's adventures in the Himalayas, his uh, uh, quest for the river and uh, his enlightenment through his interaction with river. Now we move to another novel that is based upon the actual lectures. That novel is the example of metafiction as well as an environmental concern. We shouldn't forget the very basic idea of environment that is called fauna and flora, animals and plants. So when we say environment, we should keep in mind uh, animals and plants are the most poignant reference of environment. J.M. Coetzee, the a vegetarian, vegetarian who don't uh, uh, you uh, eat animal flesh or use animal products. He uh, has written this novel, The Lives of Animals, that is a that is based on his lectures at Princeton University Press. By the way, Joem Koitze is a Nobel Prize winner. South African novelist and South African white novelist are who are you can say Europe who European descendants. They are called Afrikaners. A F R I K A N E R Afrikaners. Nadine Gordimer and G M Koitze are great Afrikaners novelist. Work is introduced by Amy. Gottman and followed by a collection of responses by uh, Marjorie ba Garber, Peter Singer, Wendy Dunninger, and Barbara Smuts. We can say there are novels or stories written in response to the major uh, uh, lectures. Lives of Animal consist of two chapters. First is called the philosophers and the animals, and the other is called the poets and the animals. In fact, these are the uh, lectures which uh, Koitze delivered as guest lectures at Princeton in uh, October 1997. Princeton lectures consisted of two short stories featuring a recurring character, the Australian novelist Elizabeth Costello. Elizabeth Costello is, you can say, a literary persona or coexists alter ego for this novel. Elizabeth Costello is invited to give a lecture to fictional Appleton College. We can see comparison in reality and fiction. Coexists chooses to discuss not literature but animal rights. 
same Costello does. Costello delivers the arguments within his lecture, quotes the plays with form and content, and leaves ambiguous to what next extent the views are his own. The lives of animals appear again in Coetzee's novel, Elizabeth Costello as well. Coetzee's novel, novella discusses the foundation of morality, need of human beings to imitate one another, needs of human beings to want what others want, leading to violence and parallel need to scapegoat non-humans. Scapegoat non-human, yani janvaron ko, podon ko, apna jo avishkar banana. He appeals to an ethic of sympathy in our treatment of animals, to literature and the poets, not philosophy. Costello tells our audience sympathy has everything to do with the subject and little to do with the object. Therefore, people who have the capacity to imagine themselves as someone else, there are people who have no such capacity and there are people who have capacity, but they choose not to exercise that sympathy. Elizabeth Costello, who uh, lectures as guest speaker to Appleton College, Despite her stature as a celebrated novelist, she opts not to give lectures on literature or writing, but on animal cruelty. Uh, that is the shared point of Coetze and Costello. Stories framed by narrative involving Costello and her son, John Bennett, who happens to be a junior professor at Appleton. Costello's relationship with Bennett is strained, and her relationship with John's wife, Norma, is more strained. Bernard was not instrumental in bringing his mother to campus. In fact, the university's leader were unaware of Bernard's relationship with Costello when they issued the inv invitation. Son has a fear that his mother's presence and opinions will be polarizing and controversial are entirely prophetic. In his private thoughts, Bernard more than once wishes she had not accepted Appleton's invitation because he teaches over there and he thinks that his mother's ideas are very eccentric, unique, um, you can say unusual. Anyway, Costello uh, uh, delivers two lectures. And in first lecture, that's uh, animals and the poets. Uh, she draws an analogy between Holocaust and exploitation of animals. Costello makes the point that just as uh, resident <coughs> in the neighborhoods of the death camps knew what was happening at the camps, but they choose to turn a blind eye. Just the Holocaust ke jo zinda bachne wale the, unhone pata tha ke saath mein kya ho raha hai, but they remain passive. It is common practice for members of society to turn a blind eye to industries that bring pain and death to animals. We can say KFC and all, you can say, uh, world that is mad for animal flesh. This turns out to be the most controversial thing that Costello says during her visit. And it causes the Jewish professor of the college to boycott the dinner held in her honor. In her first lecture, Costello moves to reject reason as the preeminent quality that separates humans from animals and allows humans to treat animals as less than the equals. She proposes that reason might simply be a species specific trait, the specialism of a rather narrow self regenerating intellectual tradition. At the same time, Costello rejects reason as the prem premier human distinction. She challenges the assumption that animals do not possess reason. We have heard this from many years ago, that a human being is the other human being. Why? Because there is a human being. There is a human being. And there is a human being. There is a human being. But here, Costello challenges that idea. Her argument rests on the fact that 
while silence cannot prove that animals do abstract thinking it also cannot prove that they do not in support of this argument costello summarizes an ape experiment that was conducted in 20s by wolfgang kohler faced with the challenge of staking several crates into a makeshift ladder in order to reach the bananas that have been suspended above his reach sultan succeeds in 